The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt with summer approaching fast. If you want to strengthen and tone your abs, the Flex Belt FDA cleared might just be for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your very own. Uh, my co-host Chris Pagman um, has used it. He knows what he's talking about. He's got a great review on sportsofanergy.com. Check it out. Um, I'm telling you, it might work. I, I definitely need it. I'm getting a fat gut here. The MMA Discussion Podcast is now available to listen to on iTunes and the radio podcast app Stitcher, which is available for free on all smartphone devices if you want to listen to us on the go. That is the way to do it. If you want to do it without taking up so much data on your phone, Stitcher app is the way to go. It doesn't take up any of your data. It just it just transfers the podcast straight to your phone, lets you listen without any issues. I think it, you honestly, there's better audio uh, on there than there is on iTunes, in my opinion. We're back. I am your host, Nick Peralta. Here I am with Mr. Katana, who I haven't heard from in weeks. What's up, brother? It's good to be here. It's good to be back. And thank you very much for having me again. Of course. Been a while, man. Man, he he's got a for for you know for for uh, for as long as it's been. When was the last time I had you on? Do you remember? Oh shit! I think it was like January. January. Yeah, what's up with that, bro? Just school and shit. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh it's been a while. Uh, first of all, we got to talk about this awesome car that happened at UFC 185 yesterday for us as uh, as far as uh, media time goes. This will be out tomorrow on Monday, but um, the date is 316 for all of you listening. That was a great card, uh, and it's made me think more so that this year there have not been any bad cards. There hasn't been a card where we were watching and just went like, ah, oh, that event could have been better. No, I haven't had that yet, um, you know. And uh, and this card did great. It was only what four four decisions out of a twelve out of a twelve card fight. That means uh, you know. Two thirds of the the card did great and got the finishes and even even the, some of the fights that went to decision they weren't bad at all. So um, you know this is a great card. We'll start from the bottom on the way up. First of all, I gotta say this about Joseph Duffy. Whoa, Joe Duffy, Irish Do- Joe Duffy, the the as many have proclaimed him the last man to beat McGregor or the McGregor Slayer. Um, went in there and holy shit, he looked amazing in there getting the first round finish. Um, against oh, I can't remember his opponent's name right now. Um, I, I want to say Jake or something. Oh, yeah, Jake Lindsay. Yeah. Jake Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a tremendous fight. Um, and I gotta say that that the the um, future looks very good for him right now. That was a, a huge upset. It was, um, not an upset, I mean, but that was a huge dominating performance. I'm thinking of the fight before it. Um. And I, and I got to say, man, he looks like he has a bright future at 155. I know he said uh, himself maybe he'll go down to 145, which would be interesting. I kind of would like to see a, a rematch between him and McGregor to see how that goes. But, you know, um, another Irish star in the UFC, I like it. It's pretty interesting, man. Another interesting fight um, that happened in the – in the the uh, what is it, the fight pass prelims? Jermaine de Rodamine looked – insanely good going up against uh, her opponent where she outstruck her and then of course uh, finished it quite clearly in the second and the ref had to stop it a la almost Joanna Young Young Jajic how do you say it uh Joanna Young Jajic we'll get on that later uh and then of course the highlight of the fight press prelims was Sergio Pettis literally dominating every second of that fight against Ryan Benoit and it, and then out of nowhere, a right hand on the button against uh, Sergio. Ryan goes for the, the kill, and sure enough, he gets it. Uh, that was a great performance. It was kind of awkward how he decided to literally kick him right in the ass right at the end of that fight for anybody that missed that. Um, but that was that was easy, stats-wise. And uh, that next to Rafael Dos Anjos, it was the biggest upset of the night. Um this is very incredible, and uh, pro- uh, and it's a bad way to start your debut at flightweight for Sergio, but it does put Ryan in, a, in an interesting position. And, but at the same time, it was like, man, he was losing that fight uh, in in more ways than just the stand up. He was losing on the ground too, and uh, it was very it was very odd, I thought. But um, 
What did you think of these? Uh, pre- did you watch the fight pass prelims? No, uh, I did catch them later. And uh, I was really impressed with every person that won. I mean, except for Pettis Benoit, they were all pretty much just slayings. I mean, it was just really dominant performances. I mean, my favorite fight to watch was the Pettis Benoit one because, of course, like, you know, you, you think Pettis it just might cruise to a decision or you might be able to finish him. And then out of nowhere, they both land. Benoit hits harder. Then he swarms him. And then he, like, kicks him right in the teeth. Right after, <laughs> from what I read and heard, he immediately said he was so well. Maybe not immediately, because he looked like he was really happy with that. But like a little bit after, he did say he was sorry. He did say that I felt like I set the sport back a little bit and owned up to it. So it's just kind of a shame that I didn't get out there more. It still was kind of a dick move, but at least immediately he he apologized. So there's that. Yeah, didn't seem like Dana White adjusted too much either. So. I don't think he'll be in, like, too much trouble. <clears throat> I doubt it. Yeah. But, that, yeah, like I said, all three guys on the prelims did great, amazing performances. Um, even uh, even on the, the FX prelims, geez, let's move on to this card because all of these uh, insane finishes were great, too. For, we started off with uh, Jared Roshaw against Josh Copeland. Now, this fight was very interesting, and I had said it before in Jared's last fight. I was very excited to see him come in with a more aggressive style, um, a more more of a I don't know more of a mean streak in him where he was trying to go after a finish, you know, where he fought uh, who did he fight? He fought uh, Olenski Olenek, remember that one? Where uh, he was beating him standing up, and then Olenek landed a right hand out of nowhere. Yeah. And I said this, you know, I, it made me a fan of him to see him go out like if he fights like that, and I'm I'm gonna be backing him all the way. You know, and and uh, he's just got to tighten up some things. His defense, he's got to be more tactical about it, and he kind of was. Now, I would say Copeland was winning the striking game in most parts, so he he went back to his wrestling, but he didn't allow himself to just stay so you know minimally in transition. You know, he was very uh, aggressive. He was very he was always moving. He was transitioning a lot better. Um, he still could, that still needs work, but at the same time, he was doing great and moving around, trying to find open positions. And uh, he put Copeland in a lot of bad positions, such as, like, you know, when he wrapped his arm around his own neck. Um, you know, that uh, – and then was and then went to, uh, for the ground and pound and, and, and dominated that fight in, 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 uh, in every sense of the grappling display. And, of course, gets the finish in the third round. I, I was very uh, happy to see that. And, you know, moving forward, I don't know who he'd fight next, but moving forward, I, I – I, uh, I am looking forward to seeing Jared fight again. He seems to uh, have, um, you know, improved in some areas. So well, you know, we'll see how he's doing uh, moving forward. What did you think of that fight? Oh, I mean, pretty sure for a very dominating. It was good to see that. I mean, the All-Nick KO was a bad loss for him. And then to see him come back like this is great. I want to say after he beat Soa, he wanted to fight Josh Barnett. I highly doubt he'll get Josh Barnett, but I, I do remember him saying something about how he wanted Josh Barnett. Yeah, well, I'm I'm thinking about it, but you know, Josh hasn't fought in such a long time. You know, who knows what he gets next? If he even comes back, I don't know what's going on. Like, and not even the UFC even. Like, it's not. It's weird that he's not asked about more often. You know what I mean? No, um, I mean, he must just be like Campman and just hasn't said anything about. But like Campman hasn't said I'm retired, but has. Like, you know, pretty much thrown out the window. They're just taking major time off. That's just weird, you know, mm-hmm. to me. You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you just say, hey, but, but it's 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 almost kind of weird that that nobody addresses it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, I'd love to see him come back. I love Josh Barnett. Yeah, exactly. With that win, I believe Jared now goes 4-1 and one in the octagon, which is uh, which is not bad. Impressive. He got a first, his first finish in the UFC. Um... Oh, uh, oh well, I was thinking Derek Lewis, but I believe he already has a, a, another fight lined up, which is pretty fast since his last fight was at the end of February. Um, uh, who's he lined up against? I do remember him being lined up, though. Derek Lewis. I don't know. Um, you're my guy on that right now. You have a computer. I don't. <laughs> I have to use this to record. I'll just fucking shout it out later. <laughs> yeah, when we find out, yeah. Oh, Sean Jordan. All right. UFC one uh, fight night sixty eight. Totally forgot. Oh, in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cormier Bader fight. I apologize too if my voice sounds a little hoarse because uh, uh, I'm coming off a sore throat right now. So terrible injury. I'm you know we almost had to skip this podcast. <laughs> as far as Jared Hoofy fights next, I don't know. Mm. Nah, I mean I'm sure they'll find someone. Someone, yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, other than that, I'm excited to see him come back. What was the next fight after that? Elias Theodora? No, Crookshank Darius. Crookshank De- Darius. Oh, man. That dude looked great. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we'd seen him fight before, but that was easily his best performance. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, what was it? I, I don't know how many times he's fought, but I, I would say he's fought at least a good handful of times, no? I want to say he fought Diego Ferreira last. Maybe. Let's look it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, he probably can't go for less. Yeah, Iron, Iranian born, but he's, uh, but he, he's American citizen. Yeah, Carlos Diego Ferreira beat him. Uh, unanimous decision. Yeah, I remember being bummed about that. And but then uh, Tony, Mar- but his one loss is actually to Ramsey Ninjam, who is no longer in the UFC. Um. <laughs> And uh, and then Charlie Brenneman, but who hasn't beaten Charlie Brenneman? So, with all that being said, well, four and one, not bad. Um, that was easily his finest performance, especially against a game Crookshank, which is you know um, a big win. I think it it, it helps uh, to get to get a finish, especially. So I would like to see him uh, get get matched up with somebody uh, equally exciting. Darren Crookshank is. I thought Darren Crookshank made a bad move trying to. Where he had a, a Darius, Darius's leg and then just kind of fell back into it like he was going to hurt him that way. But then he just ended up giving him his back and doing so, which I thought was kind of silly. Um, <clears throat> sorry. But. He was twice like that, but I mean, he got utterly dominated this time around. As far as Benelli Darius. I think he would make a good fight against Tony Ferguson, but I think Tony Ferguson has more than earned his right to fight someone that's higher up. Oh, definitely. So I'd like to see him against a Yancey Medeiros, the Dragon Sleeper Master. I think that'd be a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> the Dragon Sleeper Master. That probably would be very, uh, there. You, yeah, I mean, he was on. He was dominating that fight. Like, like, um, leg kicks, um, body kicks galore. He was on. He owned every bit of that fight. I don't, you know, um, Darren didn't do too much to hurt Darius in this fight. I think he could make a quick turnaround, honestly. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe Efrain Escudero after he's done with the Ultimate Fighter, maybe, if he's willing to wait that long. I'm sorry, I can't even believe he's still in the UFC or got a second chance. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I mean, can't you believe he got a second chance? I think it was his third chance. Um, oh, my God. And then to get him and Gastel on the coach on the Ultimate Fighter, that's... An odd move. I don't like the coaches, of course. Yeah, I thought the coaches could have been better, but I am excited for the season. The the the, lat, the first season was great. The fights were fun to watch. Um, but I, I I I love watching the uh, Latin and Mexican fighters fight. They put on great shows. Um, so I'm excited for the season. The coaches are kind of weird choices, yeah. But Efrain Ef- Escudero uh, in his last fight looks so improved, which is which says something for as long as he's been around. Um. So I mean I don't know I mean I think Efrain that makes a, makes for a fair fight especially uh, with how dominate uh, dominant he looked in his last fight. Um, but that is just one fight. But then again, so this is easily Darius's the Darius's um, best performance himself. It's not like any of his other performance beforehand were too um, impressive. This was impressive because he dominated all around the striking, the grappling. Um, he was aggressive. He used great technique at the same time. Um, it was an all-around terrific performance. So, uh, with that, I think, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that frame makes sense. If he's willing to wait that long, if not, then uh, maybe Michael Chiesa next. That'd be a pretty good fight. Yeah, I'm down with that. Then, uh, and then Elias Theodoro, the winner of Tough Canada versus whoever Canada faced, I believe, Britain. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's Cote and Yolk, I believe. Oh, so Australia? Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. uh, Canada versus Australia. That's right. Elias Theodoro, man, he's a. Uh, it's been a while since the senior fight, has it not? Or 
fight. It's not just me. Uh, I really don't have much to about the fight besides uh, it was pretty pretty dominant, pretty much all Elias. I, I thought that um, <laughs> he looked he looked very uh, what's the word um. That. I'm trying to think of like there's a word for how he looked in that fight to me, but can't think of it right now. I just thought that um, his performance was o overall decent, but there was just something missing from it. I, I don't know exactly what it was. But he got the finish, and he got the win, and he looked great doing it. And he had a pretty funny uh, post-fight uh, um, speech. So, I, you know, overall, a great performance by him. And uh, I believe he's still undefeated. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. It, oh, he also looked like he put on a little weight <laughs> going into that one. <laughs> Yeah, he looked a lot skinnier in his last fight, if I if I recall correctly. But yeah, he looked like he had love handles this time around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. What is his record? I want to know now. Um, I'll I'll tell you right here in a sec. Let me know. He is eleven and up. Never lost. Eleven and up. Not bad. Well, whoever he fights next, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Um. I say maybe uh maybe him and uh oh maybe him and Alan Joe Boy. Ooh, that'd be good. Yeah, I like that one. I I have to defer to you on this because one I know who pick and two that's a really good pick. Yeah, especially Alan. Uh, you know, was only what two and one, three and one, something like that right now. He should be fucking three and zero in my opinion, yeah. but he is two and one. He's two and one. Who did yeah. he lose to? Um, he lost to a Brazilian in Brazil. Bad I decision? Remember. Yeah, bad decision. I remember... But it, was it a bad decision? I personally think so. Not like a straight up, like... I need to I need to see this so I can... I need to know which fight that was so I can watch it myself. Alan the Brahma. The fight after this, though. Oh, versus. Warley Alves at the Shogun St. Peru. Yeah, I'd have to watch that fight again to know for sure. Yeah, I, I thought he'd be uh, Alvarez. Yeah, I don't remember that fight, uh, but I remember that f I remember him fighting that fight. I don't remember how I scored it, so I'd have to watch it again, which I will, because uh, Allen is an exciting fighter. Um, but yeah, like I said, those two would make an exciting fight, definitely. <clears throat> and holy shit, the biggest knockout of the night, uh, <laughs> Ross Pearson versus Sam Stout. I gotta say this though, Sam Stout didn't look half bad in there. He looked improved. Oh my fuck, though, did he get caught? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. With a with a bomb just, and stumped. That was it. It was great. I loved it. It was an awesome fight. I think he got knocked like fucking four feet backwards. <laughs> <laughs> he got yeah, kind of like the Cameron Hendricks knockout a little, you know. And then some part of him was still able to slightly come back up, and then was just met with that bounce. Head. Yeah, ugh, that was bad. I will say this though, Sam, Stout didn't look bad, and Pearson was getting caught. He got caught by a couple good shots by Stout, but man, did he land the the the, the haymaker? That yeah, was crazy. I gotta, I gotta mention his hair though, because there was like. <laughs> was it because it bounced when he bounced? No, I mean his hair. There was like three, four different hairstyles within his hairstyle. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he didn't fucking help apparently. <laughs> no. Yeah, he certainly uh just left it to do its thing, I guess. I don't know. I mean, um what what how is his record looking lately? Like Well, now Stout, Stout has for the first time in like a few years, like since 2010, uh lost two fights straight. Sam Stout before this was intervaling wins and losses, like win lose win lose. Since like 2010 or something. So this is the first time he's won two losses in a row. The only reason I picked Stamp Stout to win was because statistically and historically, he was supposed to win this fight. <laughs> oh, um, um, this is also, he's lost twice in a row by nasty ass knockout. This one and the one before that, KJ Nunes took his head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, like I said in the last podcast, Going leading up to this fight, you know you've been knocked out when you decide to put the ref in a guillotine. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean that was nearly a year ago. I, I'm looking at now April 16th, 2014 was when he lost to Noons, and then obviously a few uh, yesterday was when he lost to Pearson. Yeah. 
great great win for Pearson. But now he's also kind of one of these fighters that's becoming one of the one of those guys that you know is having trouble with in, with uh, consistency. He's back on the winning track right now. Um, with one with but now it's just one win. He's got to really start putting it together. I mean, um, and I don't know if he's if he has the timetable to do so now in route to a title shot. But I mean, we'll see. I mean, how old is he, Ross Pearson? He's he won the Ultimate Fighter six years ago, so it's just he's been around a while. Uh. He's thirty. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Wow, he has got a lot of fights on him though for being thirty. Yeah, how many? Let me see. Fudge, I had his page here, and then I just deleted it right as you said that. He um, he beat Stout, lost to Iaquinta, beat Maynard. That lost. horrible decision to Diego. Yeah. Yeah, and on paper he lost to Sanchez, and then he lost to Gallard and. I think that had Gallard watched, I think it was an illegal strike. Had he placed that strike better, Gallard could have beaten him. Yeah. Pretty good, but nonetheless, no contest because of that shot. Uh, he knocked out Couture. Oh, my favorite knockout of his when he knocked out Sonoropoulos. <laughs> oh, the clothesline KO. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, punched him. And it looked like someone pulled a rug out from underneath. <laughs> 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 That was funny. Yeah. That was <laughs> he like, tried the featherweight thing, and it really wasn't working for him. He looked drained. So. Well, yeah, he, he felt also that he lost his knockout power going down yeah. that far. We'll see. I don't know. Who should he fight next? Um, I don't know. I Division is <laughs> so many guys. That's the thing. Um, Maybe Thompson, once he's healthy, I guess. Not bad. He's got. I mean, because Thompson had a fight, I think this weekend, and then pulled out by injury. Oh, um, uh, has he fought Lozon ever? I think has so. Pearson? No, that can make sense. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Let's go with that. Screw it. Oh yeah. uh, well, Lozon lost, but nah, I don't know. Well, he lost to the guy that knocked him out, so it's not. You know, they both lost to I Quinta as, as of late, so I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Um. With that being said, we'll move on to the main card, which was uh, which was just uh, was just a great card overall, but uh, had some moments that had us pissed off only because you know. <laughs> but we'll go to the first fight, the flyweight fight, uh, Henry Cejudo versus uh, Chris Carriasso. Man, that was, that was a great fight, I thought by Cejudo. I mean, a lot of people were you know, bummed out that it was such a, a, a grappling affair, but I mean, he looked great. I mean, his last fight, he used all stand up in this fight. He mixed it up, uh, uh, fairly well. And of course utilizes wrestling. That's been, uh, <clears throat> been something to watch, uh, before he came into the UFC. So now I was excited to see it. And, uh, you know, it just shows that he's very well-rounded. Um, as far as who he fights next, who do you think he should fight next? Um, well, one thing I'd like to address is, well, one, his performance was amazing. Mm-hmm. Two, Joe Rogan kept going off about he, how he's dominating a top five flyweight. He's ranked number ten. Okay? He said, he said, he said, Kerry also is a top five. Yeah, he said he was top five. I didn't and hear like, that. I, I might sound like an asshole to a lot of people right now, but how I was feeling was like, Joe, come on, he's ranked number ten. Anyway, that was just like my one little annoyance for that fight. Uh, yeah, I got you. I think he should fight was um. Too bad. Um, ooh, maybe if Ali Bogatino comes back soon, or I don't know if maybe Moraga, that'd be a good fight because I know Moraga. Oh no, he's got um, Joseph Benavidez. Shit. Yep. Um, fuck. Ian McCall, Formiga, one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're all not... on these days. No, I'm trying to think right now. Bogatino hasn't fought in a while either. And he popped. Dude, yeah, but that that suspension's been that was, suspension was for nine months, and so he's he's uh he's um fulfilled out or you know like yeah he's basically served his time of suspension already. So, I mean, uh, who could he fight next? Since he did beat a top ten, I, I wouldn't want him to fight anybody outside of it. But uh-uh. I mean, they all seem too busy. Really wanted to put him on the Mexico card, so I mean, if maybe him and Dustin Ortiz then. Yeah, if they, if they have to do a rush job, then yeah. Dustin Ortiz makes sense. Dustin Ortiz, that's a tough dude. I don't know if he has a fight schedule. Let's look at it. I, I, don't know, I'll click I haven't heard of 
him scheduling any fights as of late. Nope, it doesn't sound, no. seem like it. Uh-uh. I like that. I'm give him Dustin Ortiz. Give him a few minutes. You know, don't just don't rush him to DJ. I know DJ needs some contenders right now, but I, I wouldn't rush him. There go. Him and Ray Borg, both of those guys, uh, I wouldn't rush him. But those are the two guys next uh, who could who could really make a, a a stake in the division right now. D- DJ still has a fight coming up. I believe the winner of Dawson Makovsky will fight DJ next. Um, or Horiguchi. We don't know. Uh, oh, all right. That's true, I, huh? I don't want to sound like that. I hate when I do that. So I'm like, yeah, you know, fights the winner of Johnson or Horiguchi. Um, especially with how this year has been with upsets and stuff. And we're going to get into that later. <laughs> Yeah, there's been all kinds of upsets. I kind of want to look at every fight, look at the odds, the odd, like the odds makers' choice to see who was the favorite and the underdog. I want to see like if because it's really been a year where I think the underdogs are not too far from have you know being close on par with how many underdogs have won as opposed to favorites. You know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely look into that, and then I'll probably have more info on that for uh, next this this Thursday's podcast. Because that, that definitely needs to be looked up, and I kind of want to know. This has definitely been a year of upsets. We've had two championship titles change, change hands in, in, in terrific upsets. We had a card in Brazil stacked full of them, uh, and, th- and then they've been just kind of sca- uh, scattered around all, the rest of the year as well. So it's just been it's been a crazy wild year of upsets and already, and it's only been, it's only been barely three months. So, I mean, we'll see what's going on. With, uh, with Cejudo, yeah, I like that fight. Him and... Uh, uh, Dustin Ortiz makes for uh, another challenge for Henry Cejudo, especially with this guy tough as uh, as Ortiz is. Um, with that being said, let's move on to the next fight. Who fought after that? I'm trying to think. Oh, Roy Nelson and Alistair Overeem. Yeah. Oh. I'm never picking Roy. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, me and Chris, Mr. Katana here, do um, we do a MMA fantasy league. It's just a small thing that we do, and me and him had been talking going into this card, thinking like, "Oh, this is probably this is gonna be a, this is one of those closer uh, closer fights to call in, in the, on the card." And uh, at the end of it, we both decided to pick Roy Nelson, even though originally I had picked Overeem, and I should not have done that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, and it's more so, you know, you can see that he's certainly smartened up his game in the sense that his fighter IQ seems a little better. You know, he goes in there, he doesn't do anything too uh, too drastic, you know. at this, I mean, that takes a little bit of excitement factor from his style, but, you know, um, he's fighting smarter, you know. Uh, I wouldn't say he's fighting more aggressive like he used to, which I think, you know, it's it's always about finding that balance of, of, of fighter IQ and aggressiveness and skill and technique and all those things and finding a center. He was definitely leaning more towards uh, technique and strategy, um, which, hey, it worked. It obviously, you know, he, he certainly dominated that fight. Um, you know, I just think that personally, uh, you know, there's some things he could fix, and I'm sure he knows that. And, then, you know, he's working with Greg Jackson, uh, you know, one of the best coaches in the world. And uh, you can see that his time there is certainly uh, is certainly improving his his game these days. And uh, like you said, he's only 34. And uh, I know he's been around a while. He certainly has a lot of fights. That doesn't mean that he doesn't have what it takes in him to get one title run in him uh, in the UFC. That being said, I you know it's been talked about already. I personally want do want to see that uh, Overeem Junior Dos Santos fight. Um, so especially because he's fought a lot of the guys in the top 10 already, such as Verdum Hunt. Barnett, I believe. has he fought Barnett? Uh, I don't think so. Over him? Yeah. No, I don't no. think so. No. So you know, but as we were talking about this earlier, we don't even know where Barnett is right now. So, with that being said, I think him and JDS that makes the most sense. I know JDS is coming off of, I believe, hey, he had some kind of injury in that Miocic fight. Probably, I don't Did, fucking know. Maybe I forget, did. but well, I will look it up. But yeah, him and Junior Dos Santos, that fight has been meaning to happen for like three years now. Since like 2011. 20, yeah, so four, three and a half years now. It's been a while, and I, I want to see it. I want to see it happen. I mean, I know it's a few years too late, but I, you know, that fight makes sense. Even Dana's more, you know, yeah, that fight makes sense now. And it does. I would like to see it. It needs to happen. Make that one happen. What that means, I think you agree, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I agree. Let's do Overeem versus JDS and Roy versus Barnett. But if we can't get Barnett, 
If not, then him in a rematch with Ben Rothwell makes sense. Ooh, that'd be good. But yeah. no, Ben Rothwell's fighting Mitrion, so I guess whoever. Is he? Oh, that's right. Yeah, maybe yeah. the winner of that. But then he's beaten Mitrion before. Man, this heavyweight division just fought each other all over the place, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, man, Barnett coming back would really shake things up a little. But I wonder what's happened with him. I don't know. I think he just decided to take time off. I mean, I well, I, that's obvious in the fact that he hasn't fought over a year. But it's just, but yeah. to do what? I mean, I know he he did Metamorphosis. Uh, I don't know yet that he's going to participate in the next Metamorphosis event. But you know, it's just you would think. I don't. I don't like that he's not talked about more often. Like, where's he at? What's he doing? Are we gonna get him a fight soon? Yeah. You know, not too many people ask about it. So. Me personally, I, I I would like to see him come back. I mean, I'd love to see him come back. Mm-hmm. But, I'm sure uh, a lot of people would. I don't know. It, it hasn't been like you know we're in the rumor mill like Josh Barnett being eyed for this fight or anything like that. You know. So, yeah, exactly. I don't know. He's not talked about a lot. <laughs> Barnett, we love you, man. You gotta come back, and I'll be talking about you all day. Let's do it. You know, he needs to come back. I, I want to see it. Other than that, JDS Overeem set that up. I can't wait to see it. First of all, who do you think? Just off the top of your head, who wins that fight? Oh, well, you already know how I stand. All right, all right. Well, I, I just want to get it on record. Yeah, JDS takes him out in the first. Oh, um, shit. I, I think basically all JDS has to do is catch him. Overeem has been fighting a lot smarter lately. I picture Overeem working his legs. Um, that's a really um, good plan, but I, I just think that JDS will be able to <laughs> overhand rights all day, uppercuts, just tag him in, done. <sighs> Yeah, Wolverine. I mean, it's it's just a matter of reaction with Wolverine. He does he does attack, um, no matter what. I don't think he's not a guy who just doesn't try to attack you. You know, and that's the, that's the thing with him is that you know you got to be ready. You got to be ready to counter. JDS is decent at that though. He's also like, very good at coming forward. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you look at what Rothwell did, where he caught him with the right hand at the perfect moment. JDS can do that with many different strikes at the perfect moment. So you would just need to catch him at the perfect distance, and that'll be it. Fair enough. <laughs> Had like Roy it. been able to do that with more than just his right hand, he wouldn't be able to beat over. I don't him. like that he, you know, in the fight at the end of the fight, he hit, he drops him finally, and then goes for a takedown with twenty seconds left. I was like, well, dude, what are you doing? Oh my god! I. I oh man, I, mean, I was just—I literally laughed. I was like, "What? What does that accomplish? You're not winning this Goldberg, fight." Or if it was Joe, but they were like, did he just not, like, know the time? Did Man, he, like, yeah, but you would think he did. I don't know. I don't... <sighs> that was the oddest part of the card for me was the fact that he drops him and then goes for a takedown. Yeah. And then Roy looked surprised as hell when they said, winner by unanimous decision, Alistair Overeem. Well, I mean, I'm sure Nelson was thinking about it in the Diaz mentality because Overeem, whenever he would land, he would literally run across to the other side of the cage to, like, I guess restart, you know, the engagement, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is very funny because you can see uh, Nelson like, what are you doing? <laughs> Um, which, yeah, I mean, I can see where that would upset you, but at the same time, again, it's smart. It's a smart style. Obviously, you want to stay away from a guy that's trying to knock your head clean. <clears throat> With that being said, I, I, I will commend Overeem on his uh, good performance. And, yeah, again, you know, he's looked all right. JDS, you know, again, has really solidified that he is the number two, if not – or number th- two or three guy right now. I would say two, you know, since he hasn't lost to Redooms, uh Especially so. If we could like make a tie at two. Yeah, we'll just make a tie at two and we're doing. Yeah. All things considered, so. I, I yeah, I would certainly like to see that fight. And Overeem should know this. If he does beat JDS, he's right there. He's right. He's probably next for the title if he beats JDS. So I mean, it's a fight. I think for him, he should accept. I mean, if he doesn't feel unless he doesn't feel he's ready for the title yet. But he called both the the champ and interim champ out, so. You know, we'll see. It's not funny because I know Blaze will hate me for saying this because he just oh, no. called him. But uh, when they asked him at the post fight presser, they were like, You called him out, blah, blah. How about JDS next? He immediately was like, Oh, I didn't call him out. I was just saying I'm coming. What, then, what does that mean? What, of course you called him out by saying that you're coming. Yeah, and I don't know because then he was like, He never once said, I mean, Blaze said he said yes to the JDS fight. I didn't hear it. I'll have to watch it again. But he never once said 
JDS is named at all, and he also just mentioned taking time off. But he says um, that after every fight. Oh, I'm gonna take some time off. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's the fight everyone wants to see. That should have happened. Well, you know, it's not maybe at the top of your list, but like you know, it's for sure one of those fights you've been wanting to see for the last. It's few years. it's a fight in my opinion that I think if he wins it, he's probably next for a title shot. Being being yeah. how shallow heavyweight is right now. Whoever beats JDS next should get a title shot. If it's you know whoever beats him should get the shot. It's as simple as that. Yeah, people thought that with Miocic, and I'm sure if Overeem beat JDS, everybody a lot a lot the majority of people would say the same. You know? Yeah. So what you know. We'll see. Let's see what Overeem has to say. I mean, uh, another thing too, if like say Kane gets injured again, um, he, yeah. him and Verdum make sense for an interim title shot. But then, but I, yeah. interim I, like defense, I guess that would be. What happened? Interim defense. Interim title. Def- yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Um, in which case, you know, so I think he should stay, you know, stay healthy and stay in shape, stay ready for that. Possibly, you never know what could happen. You know what I mean? So. Especially with how long Kane's been gone. Yeah, if I'm the UFC, that's what I'm trying to get done. Over him, stay healthy, do this, do that. So, so you know, in case. Because you know, he's a name. <laughs> so, we'll see what happens. Although, I, it's, I don't mean to, dis, you know, to, to, to crap all over, over him's character in any sense. But at the same time, I, I wonder if he would say yes. Like, say, hey, okay, Kane's out. We need you. Can you take this fight on like a month's notice against Verdum? I don't. Would he say yes? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he would. Honestly, uh, he has beaten Verdum twice. I know he's beaten him before, but it's like you know, would he take that fight in a month's notice? I mean, I've never heard of him ever taking a fight on any like short notice ever, even outside the UFC. So I don't know if he would ever do that. I mean, this was a semi quick turnaround. Plus, he's in Great Jackson's camp. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um. But we'll see. Like I said, it's a fight I want to see. But, you know, he, he's certainly in the mix at, at heavyweight right now because it's so shallow right now. Uh, there's still a lot of mid-tier guys trying to get into the top 15, which I think a lot of them should be already past a few guys. Like, say, uh, Struve or Noguera. I think Noguera's out. Or Bigfoot or, you know, even Mir before even before he beat Bigfoot. So it's just, you know. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think that a lot of these heavyweights are, are, are doing good. Sola, Jared, uh, Olenek. Um, I know a lot of people don't consider him top tier just yet, but I think they're getting there. And uh, just give it another year. I think heavyweight will be very interesting in a year. That being said, we'll move on to the next fight. Johnny Hendricks and Matt Brown. <laughs> One of the funniest comments by Lenny. You remember Lenny? <laughs> was, uh, was, oh, man, look, he's paying homage to JSP. <laughs> <laughs> that was I mean that that was just like the Cejudo fight he looked great he didn't get caught by anything too significant other than a few elbows in the clinch um but he uh you know he uses wrestling to really improve uh his positioning a lot he put some he did some damage to uh to Brown no matter how he sliced it he used his wrestling he, it wasn't like in certain certain instances where he was fighting Robert where he just kind of kept him down he did work I saw I say he improved uh upon the last fight um and did great and uh he made it a he made it his fight did everything that he wanted to do it was a dominant fight and you know i can't really say anything other than that thing other than good job to johnny so it was a great fight i thought what about you um i think i went exactly how i imagined going. yeah basically that that's kind of like i envisioned it going two ways johnny would stand and matt and they would trade a lot or Johnny would take him down and keep him there and really just you know stay you know, utilize a grapple heavy uh strategy in which he did but he did in a more exciting way than i thought he was going to yeah i think it was just gonna be like the hendrix condit fight where um i I didn't think matt brown was gonna really hurt him badly in the stand-up but matt brown looked pretty good on the feet i mean there are moments where he was really i mean mess him up in the clinch standing with the elbows catching him with a head kick uh even in boxing range he was getting him pretty nicely so matt brown can definitely hang in there with I for sure think he's ranked fairly top five. It just kind of sucks that, like, you know, Hendricks and Lawler, the two guys they can't be in the top two. But it went exactly how I thought. I mean, Hendricks would use the, his um, his just really powerful wrestling to constantly take Brown down. Brown would constantly throw up submissions from the bottom. Hendricks would need to fight them off and get better position from there and land his strikes. Hendricks really impressed me. I think, of course, what a lot of people point out was Hendricks' physique. And a lot of people point that out, too, because it looked vastly improved from any other fight 
And uh, overall, he made a great impression. I still think he needs to fight one more time before he gets to the belt. Uh, because Lawler, McDonald goes down in July, and then let's say something happens, there might need to be a break. So let's get Hendricks versus Woodley going. Yeah, I like that fight. That makes sense too. Plus, I think it would be a lot more of a of an interest, intriguing matchup considering Woodley's decent, uh, and uh, you know, much more uh, adept in the grappling department to where he could hang with Johnny there at least. Um, and then on the feet, it'd certainly be interesting. Both guys have incredible knockout power, so you never know what could happen. So I agree with that. I like that fight. Him and Johnny getting one more. Uh, you know, him and Johnny getting set up. <clears throat> as far as Matt Brown, I know Carlos Condit is scheduled to fight Alves next. So you know, if if Condit wasn't scheduled, I would want to see him and Matt Brown. That fight was supposed to happen a long time ago, but I personally would love to see that fight. I'd love to see it too, but looking at the rankings right now and what your viable options might be, maybe Tarek Sapadine or maybe Jake Ellenberger. Yeah. Ellenberger Brown kind of makes sense too, yeah, because they kind of, Brown's dropping a little bit with the uh, with momentum, momentum when he's lost, and Ellenberger's coming back off that three fight losing streak. So, you know, I think they kind of meet around the same uh, area right there where that fight makes sense. Um, especially with J- uh, Jake wanting to stay active if Matt Brown's down, which I think he would be to try and get a win in there. That fight makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it'd be a really good board too. Definitely. I mean, it depends. I mean, it could be Brown working him if Jake Ellenberger is just too gun shy, but who knows? I mean, Ellenberger looked great in his last fight, but uh, Koscheck looked very tentative too to want to trade with him. So. Yeah, and he kind of, you know. Now we'll talk about that later. But that was, um, again, great performance by Johnny. Uh, and, yeah, him and Woodley, I want to see that next. We'll move on to the first upset of two very big upsets in the night. Joanna, young uh, Jay chick coming in there looking like Miss Pac-Man. Uh, and I say that in the sense of, like, the female version of Manny Pacquiao, considering she went in there and just put these – fast flurry flurious punches right on Carla and got the victory to win the belt. I I per, like we said it before um the fight was going to go down me Jonas and my host Chris Pagman um that that fight really was down to two things. If Joanna could defend the takedown um and if uh Carla could get the fight to the ground. And so two of the same things. And I honestly believe Carla could get the fight to the ground. And seeing it firsthand, I was thinking, whoa, she can't get her down. She got her down once, and then she got back up. And then Carla could not hang with her standing up. And I knew that going in. But I just really believe that, you know, Carla's wrestling would get it done. Not many women have been able to defend it before. Uh, before, uh, And she did it, what, 14 times out of 15 or so? It was incredible. Uh, yeah. Something Carla around that range. Take down. And like the one takedown was basically if you if someone didn't if you didn't watch the fights the one takedown was basically a good enough takedown to count like she got her down for just a few seconds for the takedown to count but she only landed one takedown out of seventeen attempts. Damn. Sheesh. I love it. First of all, of course, me being the advocate for women's MMA that I am, uh, I, I I wanted something like this to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen here, but I wanted this. I wanted someone to challenge Carla, at least to make it a good enough fight to where it could it could go to where people talk about women's MMA and want to you know see it thrive. I want to see it thrive, and I thought, and I've said in the last few weeks, if you want to listen to any of the past episodes, I've said this many times. The fact that Ronda Rousey started the division is 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 bad in one sense. Many people look at her division like it's not competitive because she's so dominant. To put the rest of the division and try and measure them at her bar is unfair uh, at this point because she's just these one-of-a-kind athletes, uh, this, this one-of-a-kind fighter. And I think it'll be a long time uh, before uh, we ever see somebody fight at her level. You know what I mean? I think she's so ahead of her time. And um, with this division, I wanted there to be a lot of – a competitiveness I wanted there to be something to really talk about other than just the champion and Joanna went in there and 
did it, basically. Because now we're going to be talking about this chick. And now we're going to be talking about her next fight. And now we're going to see just where exactly this division's at. And I and I said it from the beginning. This is one of the most competitive. It's the welterweight equ equivalent for men in women's MMA right now. Because it's that exciting. I think all the fighters in at, at 115 are, are some of the best in the world uh, in all of women's MMA. I think that the division is just so prime for for excitement right now in in not just the ufc but in invicta as well you have many stars coming out like Paige van zant felice eric who's already been there carlos barza and now you have joanna um and you have some fighters that have made good names uh, of themselves off of the ultimate fighter such as uh, ronda marcos and and uh, of course rose nama Yunes. you have so many names so many good contenders and competitors and this division just looks great, and I'm excited for it in, in, in so many ways, and, and I can't wait to see who's next for it. And, uh, and honestly, you never know what could happen. Right now, looking at the rankings, it's, it's all up and down, but uh, you never know. With Paige Van Zandt, I think if she beats like Felice Herrick and then gets one more good win, she could be next. Um, right now, this division just looks great. Jessica Panay's in there. It's just, wow, there's so many good possible fights. Michelle Watterson is in rumors to come to the UFC and join 115, and if that happens, oh, <laughs> this division just looks great, and it's just, it gets me excited. I'm, I'm happy the way that that fight went out, and jo Joanna proved so many people wrong about her, including myself, and I'm so happy that she did, because this division looks great, and I'm excited, and man, what were your thoughts on this fight? Oh, oh my god, I loved it. It was I was shocked and I wanted Joanna to win because the more I learned about her, the more I really liked about her. Mm. And but the whole time in the back of my mind I was just like, Carla's wrestling is gonna be way too much for her. That's what I was thinking because if you looked at her last fight, her Joanna's last fight was really close and she got taken down seven times. Mm -hmm. And holy fuck did she work on some wrestling because Carla couldn't do shit and she looked lost as hell. I mean, it looked like me in a wrestling match against Brock Lesnar. Like, <laughs> it looked like I was trying to take <laughs> and he was like, just get the fuck out of here. It's like, she worked her every single second of that fight and Carla was just in complete desperation mode. The only thing that was in my mind was that if are these attempts starting to wear down Joanna? Apparently not. And uh, looking at the stats here really quick, Asparza landed six strikes that whole fight to Joanna's 55. <laughs> and I swear she landed at least fucking 30 of them in that finish and flurry. Yeah. <laughs> so fast. And oh my god. Uh, she's made a really big fan of me, and that was an amazing performance. And this is huge for both division, and this is huge for women's MMA, this is huge for her country, of course. It's amazing fight, amazing finish. Overall. Yeah, it makes me think, like, the timing of putting a card in Poland is a little, it, you know, if, because, say, it's like a few months more down the road, that'd be a perfect card to have her headline, that event would sell out. That country would shut yeah. down for her, I bet. Yeah, and, just, um, I mean, she's, she, I guarantee you, she's perfectly fine right now. Just get a warm body to fight her. That's not a card. Well, I mean, who would be next for her? Let's look at the rankings here, because I am curious as to, you know, uh, who is next. Paige Van Zant is pretty slow down the rankings. I know she's a, a, a credible name, but, you know, she's down there right now. So, she's 10. Um, Gedalia has been beaten by Young Jaik. Yeah. Kenne is number three. Nama Yunus is four, but she's signed. But nowadays, that doesn't mean shit. I mean, they could just cancel a fight and move someone like that. Yeah, so. I wouldn't want them to, though, at the same time. So it's just like, you know, I think keep her where she's at. Plus, Rose even realizes she's got some things to work on. With a young record like hers, she's got so much room and time to do whatever because she's only, like, what, 24, 23, if that. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's look. Let me give it a, let me give it a gander. Jessica Panay makes sense. Especially, uh, does she even have a fight schedule? I don't even know. I don't think so, but you can go off on this for a minute because I gotta go piss fight fans. All right, one second. Uh, well, let me just talk about this. Let me uh, according to the rankings right now, and they haven't been changed yet. They could be different. Obviously, Joanna's the champ, so Carla and her switch off at one and two. Claudia Gadella at number two. Jessica Panay at three. Rose Nami Yunus at four. Tisha Torres at five. Now I don't know if Tisha Torres has a fight scheduled up. Joanna Calderwood, who does have a fight scheduled. Um, oh, she's fighting C.O. Heham, 
the uh, Korean uh, kickboxer who looked very, very. Oh wait, no, 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 no. That's not. That's who Joanna fought last. Seo Hee Ham is fighting. Uh, who is she fighting? She's fighting somebody, man. Molly. That. Yes. Thank you. And then you got a uh, random Marcos. Who could who could one day make a name? She's got a she's got a lot more work to do though. Felice Herrig at number eight, uh, eight Eisen Daly at number nine, Paige Van Zant at number ten. So Felice are uh, you know, but that that fight is very important. Who knows what could happen? Especially I think if Felice wins that fight, she puts herself in a good position to maybe get that title fight. Um, Paige Van Zant herself, depending on how the performance looks. Heather Clark at eleven, Juliana Lima. Angela Hill, C.O. Heham, who has made the rankings nice. Beck Rollins at 15. So this division's got some, uh, got a lot of work to do. Honestly, they got to kind of catch up uh, to each other here. There's got to be a lot of fights that need to happen. That gives Joanna real time to to kind of uh, take a breather. Honestly, which is unfortunate, unless they want to give her Jessica Panay, which I wouldn't be opposed to. Um, you know, Panay has as the former Invicta champion herself, uh, Adam Weight. And, uh, you know, it look, looked great in the Ultimate Fighter, but at the same time did lose to Carla. But, you know, not, you never know. What that uh, that doesn't mean too much. Plus, I think Jessica has a, a much more um, competitive striking style than, than to Carla's against Joanna. And Jessica Panay is more of a jiu-jitsu based fighter and uh, I think she'd be more than willing to try and uh, try and stand with Joanna and try and take it to the ground in the sense that she would probably use her striking better than Carla could to set up takedowns and to set up uh, you know submissions on the ground transitions grappling I think it'd be a much more exciting fight to watch not that this fight wasn't exciting but I just think in, in more cases uh, they're all around this fight that fight would be great Rose Nama Yunus. I know she's fighting somebody that isn't ranked right now. And I can't. She's fighting a new signee. Yeah, can't, I can't remember. remember. It's on the UFC 187 card. Oh my God! The best quote I heard from Joe Rogan all night was this: "I pray to the gods of war every night that nobody gets hurt on that card." <laughs> <laughs> Which I think we all should. We should get yeah, on that. We should all be doing it. You know, she'll all be doing that. That card looks great. Not since UFC 100 have we seen a card that look that sexy looking. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got John Jones and Chris Weidman, two of your best champions, defending uh, uh, the, the title. I mean, only in a fight like that could Chris Weidman be co-headlining a car. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, I mean, unless it was Aldo McGregor, which will just throw McGregor over. Anyway. Nah, even, I, I wouldn't even be okay with that. I'd be like, I wouldn't, I'm not okay it's with different that. with welterweight because Robbie's a new champ, you know, and, uh, you know, that division being the way that it is. Other than that, you know, it's just... But like I said, you know, this 115 has some time, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of possible contenders, but they all really need to get to work and, and do some and, 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 uh, and get some highlights going for themselves. But for now, I think the fight that does make sense, I wouldn't be opposed to Jessica Panay. You know what I mean? Um, um, yeah, she beat Marcos, who... She beat Randa, yeah, she beat Randa Marcos. She lost to Carla, but I mean... That was strictly because she couldn't stop wrestling. And it's not be like her facing Joanna would be a wrestling type of fight, I think. Um, it would be more It would be more kind of like the Claudia Gadella fight in the sense that Panay is uh, more of a jiu-jitsu grappler than a wrestler. And her striking is, in my opinion, uh, a, a few levels above Carla's. And, and she could, she could uh, make a fun fight with Joanna. So that being said... You were saying this earlier. Yeah, it's hard to look at this list and say who could beat Joanna with that kind of performance. That, but then again, that was easily the best Joanna young young J chick that we've ever seen ever. And, oh, um, easily in the most highest pressure situation, but not to take anything away from Carla at all or Joanna, but stylistically, with after seeing her ability to stop that takedown. It was just like her fighting someone in their first boxing lesson, you know? Like, oh, no. It was just, it was tailor. Once she stopped that takedown, it was just tailor made for her. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing. We said it, we predicted that. If she could stop the takedown, it's her fight to win. And sure enough, man, it was like, it was, it was similar to the, to the, uh, the, you know, the TJ Hennon Burrell first fight in that she was just not supposed to win that. And she went in there and dominated. Uh, every portion of that fight, <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm 
you know, I'm excited to see what goes on with this division. I know me and Jonas have an argument ahead in the next podcast to, to talk about with this, but I'm excited for it uh, and excited for this division, man. I can't wait. What do you think she should fight next? Um, I would go Jessica Penne next. I, what I think they're going to do is they're going to give her Van Sant a uh, parrot winner next. I can totally see them doing that because that's a really marketable fight. You want to strike while the iron's hot? But, yeah, I wouldn't be. I mean, with Van Zant, I wouldn't in particularly want her to get a title fight two fights out of the gate. But you know, I can see them doing that for that reason. But you know, if Felice wins, is different because she's been around. She's already so marketable and and has uh, and has a lot of fights, a lot of highlights. There's a story there. She did beat her best friend. Um, but if if Van Zant wins, I would want like one more fight. In which case, you know, give her Panay then. And then give Van Zant someone like maybe Tisha or Gadella or maybe Carla or even Rose if she beats uh, the new signee. <clears throat> you know, so we'll see. But uh, there's all kinds of great fights that 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 strawweight has to offer. It's a new division. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun fights, a lot of excitement going around. And I and I think, like I said, this is one of the most competitive divisions you'll see in women's MMA. And uh, the UFC is fortunate to have all these names. And I do hope Michelle Watterson comes in because, you know, give her a couple fights and then the title show. Ugh, I'll be so happy. That's my favorite straw weight for anybody that doesn't know. But her and next to Felice, those are my two favorite straw weights. That being said. Uh, this is definitely my, one of my, I mean, of all time, Magumi Fuji, Fuji, but um, now, I mean, of current, I have to go Rose and I'm hopping on the bat when I can, I don't care what anyone says. You're getting <laughs> you know, on Just because the more I learned about it, the more I liked her and the point of performance like that. Oh my God, you're, uh, I'm a fan. I'll say this too. Yeah, definitely. She made me a fan too. And I mean, if she can keep this going. She's going to strike the hearts of so many fight fans. Definitely. Um, I would say, oh, you know who one day I would love to see in the UFC strawweight division is Jessica Aguilar, who was the World Series of Fighting's uh, women's strawweight champ right now. And she has a... She has beaten uh, Carla Esparza before, so... Yeah. She, and, you know, she's been saying it for months now that she believes she's the best strawweight in the world. Right now, all the commotion is over at the UFC. Nobody's talking about her division because there essentially isn't one. They just give her fighters they can find. And then put her as a, like in a feature attraction, you know. So, I, mean, I, I think it just benefits her to – because I, I don't – the way I look at it is I don't believe World Series of Fighting is doing all too much to really make a division. They're just really doing what they can to market Jessica, which, you know, if she's getting money doing that, good for her and stuff. But, I mean, if you really want to stake your claim that you're the best strawweight in the world, right now the UFC is the place to go. Or even Invicta, but – I just believe that, you know, if she really wants to to be, you know, recognized as one of the best in the world, the UFC is the place to go because her being a singular champion in a non-existent division is is not going to work out for her. That being said, uh, I do hope she gets goes to the UFC. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully. Yeah. Let's talk about this main event. This oh my god. <laughs> well, just give me your thoughts on it first of all. I was shocked as hell. I mean, I was I was telling Brittany that um, because I picked Carla, and then I was like, well, Pettis should win this one next. And then RDA <laughs> comes up and dominates him in the first round, and I'm like, well, Dos Anjos is basically telling me to go fuck myself. <laughs> <with> my- <laughs> and then he not only like dominates him in the first round, I mean, he hurts him bad and beats him in every area and does that for all five rounds. I mean, he wasn't trying to just coast and be like, oh, I just got the three, now I can take back. No, he worked hard all five rounds and dominated Pettis, and there wasn't a single point where, like, if they rematched, you'd be like, oh, well, Pettis won this. So all he has to do is make sure he doesn't get taken down and he can strike with them. Or when he got to the ground, he kept throwing up subs, so as long as he gets down, it'll be fine. Like, no, Pettis needs to reinvent himself. Go up against you know, the Zombies again, basically. Absolutely shocked. And this is a very curious situation because what Khabib Nurmagomedov did to Rafael Dosanios, that being said, Khabib needs to beat Zeroni, and uh, Rafael Dosanios is a completely different fighter since then. 
but oh, that's that's always gonna be something in the back of people's mind. Yeah, man. I for me, you know, it, it was much closer of a fight standing up. But the reason why it looked so drastically um, in favor of Dos Anos the whole time is because he was coming forward and he was making Pettis react. He wasn't giving Pettis time to think about doing anything flashy or doing anything crazy or even countering him you know, because he was always in his face, always attacking him. Pettis would try and counter back with body kicks and leg kicks. That certainly did hurt Dos Anos. But, you know, and he landed uh, a couple of he, he landed a head kick. He landed a good couple of punches on, on Rafael. Other than that, he never had really much time to breathe. Rafael did not get, I mean, he, he had a picture perfect game plan when he went in there and he, and, you know, it was executed 100%. And uh, Rafael Cordero, man, that guy, oh, it makes me wonder, God, well, you know, what's he got for Verdun when Kane, when he fights Kane? You know what I mean? And he's got, now he's got one champ. Imagine whatever game plan he's got going because he's first of all he's going up against a master game planner in Kane Velasquez who who just knows how to put a good strategy together along with his team and um, just because of the fact that one of his guys won a title just now it gets me even more excited for Verdun Kane you know what I mean um, but yeah that was just such that was such a I mean I really didn't expect uh, for um, for Pettis to, to be so staggered like that in, in, in a high pressure situation, uh, the, the, the kind that Rafael was bringing, he was bringing him an aggressive style, one in which he didn't have time to breathe or do much. And with Dos Santos being such a, uh, a, a, a decorated grappler himself on the ground, he was able to defend a lot of Pettis's takedowns. Not only that, but he was also able to make sure that no matter what, he stayed in dominant position, that he was the one being offensive, that he was the one, you know, because like with Pettis on his back, he's usually the guy who can be offensive more so than the guy on top of him, but he didn't allow that. And uh, there's just so many other things like that, that Rafael was able to stump on the part of Pettis. And it just makes for such a great, great upset. It was a, fantastic fight on Dos Anjos' part it was a uh, picture perfect man and it, it was it was one of those things where it was a mix of smarts and fun and excitement and aggression and it was just one of those masterful performances yeah um, ask me something though what's up you're CM Punk what are you thinking the whole time <laughs> oh I know to see both of your training partners lose in one night uh, it's probably a little disheartening but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, Lenny, to go back to Lenny, which is getting all kinds oh, of... Oh, uh, for any of our MMA D fans that, that are very, uh, you know, uh, that are that, that participate a lot on the Facebook page, um, t go ahead. <laughs> Lenny had said something funny where he was just like, uh, Pettis was basically getting shut down because he knew CM Punk is watching him the whole time. And <laughs> <laughs> He's like taxi punk, dude. Yeah, he was a <laughs> bunch of funny silliness, Lenny. But that was a great fight on the part of uh, Rafael. And with CM Punk, I don't, you know, no matter what, you can't take away from Pettis. But Rafael really came in there. It wasn't a matter of skill set or, or technique more so than it was just knowing what to do to shut your opponent down. And, uh, and, you know, utilizing what you have to be able to do it, you know. And um, what I love about that also is Rafael showed improved wrestling. You know, I mean, uh, he's take, he's had trouble taking guys down before. It's, you know, like uh, like he's taking Cerrone down, but it's not like, you know, it's too, Cerrone makes it too hard to get to taken down. But um, I think he took Jason High down just one time, and then the other three were defended, if I remember that those stats correctly. Um, I so, yeah. Yeah, but then, you know, that, that also makes this a very interesting thing where Rafael just a year ago lost to Khabib Nurmagomedov, won his next, what, four now? Three? Three fights? Three. Uh, Jason High, Ben Hendo. Oh, okay, won well, his next four. Yes, he is. And, so. I don't know, I want to say Cerrone was, was not after that. He was before that. No, he was no, before he, he lost to Khabib. Khabib. That was in 2013, yeah. Man. So I would think, you know, the winner, of course, we already knew would probably be the winner of Cerrone Khabib, but now it just makes it even more interesting to pay attention to that fight. 
Um, either way, whoever wins, this is a rematch for Rafael. He's beaten Cerrone and he's lost at Khabib. So, man, the, the, the lightweight division has gotten very exciting uh, as well all of a sudden. You know, it was already that way with Pettis, but it's just because he doesn't fight as often because of injuries and stuff. But um, I thought, you know, even if Pettis had won and then come back in like the next four months, the excitement would, factor would still be there. But it's very exciting in that, you know, the divisions are are, are, are uh, switching around. There's a lot more excitement going around and there's more champ, different champions, different matchups. I love it, man. Oh, it's just crazy to like look at where Rafael dos Anjos is, how far he's come, and to look at something to where like how dominant PJ Penn was, and how I would say like dominant, dominant Ben Henderson was, but obviously he had a few defenses at least. And to see how long Pettis held the title, but most of that being injury, and then to see like Pettis and be like, who can beat this guy? And then Rafael dos Anjos comes in just after his first title defense, and whoops his ass all five rounds it's just crazy mm -hmm. yeah i mean what do you think next for pettis who does he fight next coming off his loss i was asking myself that same question and i was just thinking i mean it's this is tough i mean you can't fight i i don't think him versus and bendo again for a third time be a good move i if, if khabib loses i think that'd be a good move mm -hmm. khabib versus pettis mm -hmm. if don cerrone loses I don't know. I think it, people would definitely want to see it. I don't know if it'd be the smartest move. Um, maybe him versus Michael Johnson. Maybe him versus Barboza. Barboza, yeah, I was about to say. Or yeah. Diaz, since they've already been talking trash. But... Oh my god, he'd tear his legs up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, who else is there right now? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, those are the, the most prominent names that he could fight. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, lightweight's gotten more exciting. It's just more about these guys that are trying to get up to a title fight. But then you think about Pettis, anybody he fights, you know, is in prime condition to really get themselves in a contendership with a win over him, or Pettis just shuts everybody down. Either way. Um, and then maybe gets himself back into a, a rematch some, someday. We'll see. Uh, unless, you know, Khabib's the champion, but we'll, or. Donald Cerrone is the champion, which would be cool. I honestly would love to see Cerrone win that Khabib fight. I'm a huge Cerrone fan, so. But we'll see, man. Lightweight's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, fun coming up with new champion, new contenders coming up that are healthy. I like it. This card's great, man. This this really this card was a big gateway into what's to you know uh, all kinds of new things to be excited about for the rest of this year. And I loved it. And again, that was the thing that I was addressing was, you know, before we even got on this kid. There hasn't been a with all the crap that's gone on with PEDs and 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 all these 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 cruddy politics, you know, is new uh, and again the topic coming up about New York and all this stuff that's, you know, bummer stuff to talk about outside of the sport. This year in MMA, and I mean both, you know, all three, like with, with, with World Series of Fighting and Bellator and UFC, there hasn't been a card this year where I've watched and gone, nah, that wasn't, you know, the, the, this year has been great with fights, especially in the UFC. There hasn't been a bad UFC card. Bellator hasn't put on a bad Bellator card. And the World Series of Fighting has put on um, um, two great, great cards. You know, it's been, it's been fun to watch. Oh, everything. Everything's been great. I, I wouldn't say any card at all has been lackluster. I mean, you can watch any organization. I mean, it's not all just the UFC. Like you said, Bellator. Um, I always say Wasaw, so Wasaw. <laughs> Wasaw. <laughs> all the UFC cards, they've all been great. And, I mean, it's this year is really stuck at home as far as, like, it's just you can't predict these things. They're just so unpredictable. I mean, all you got to do is watch the or look at the betting odds and then watch Bigfoot versus Mirror card. And then see how unpredictable this shit is. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. And for anybody listening, the next co the next podcast we do that'll come out on th this Thursday. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have it for you on that one. Like, what are the uh, like how many underdogs have won as opposed to how many favorites have won? And uh, and probably just the UFC. It'd be hard to get the betting odds for every Bellator card or World Series of Fighting card. Um, but if I can, then I'll try. And then I'll add those all up and. I'll do the math for you guys. Um, before we close out, I know Chris has got to be somewhere, so you want to get these fan questions done? Oh, yeah, no problem. All right, let's do it. First one, who do you think will be the next... Huh, 
Well, we were kind of just talking about this. Who do you think will be the next strawweight champion after Joanna? I don't know. Who even knows if that they're even ranked right now? Who knows who it'll be? Joanna. Uh, first of all, even six months ago, did anybody think Joanna would be the next champion? No. Oh, I mean, hell no. I mean, yeah, I, Zach. Joanna, before she fought Claudia, was only one fight in the UFC and then fought Claudia. And But she had such a good streak going that, you know, because it was prominent. She was, she was very notable. She was fighting a lot. So everybody was, you know, okay, this girl, you know, looks all right. Goes in, beats, barely beats Claudia. And I was like, okay, there's a challenger right there for her. Makes sense. Comes in, gets the win. You never know. That's the thing about strawweight is you never know who could just come up out of nowhere and just uh, and make make the, uh, put the division on notice or just you know get that title. And with this year being the way it is, underdogs coming around, making names, statements, it's great. You know, so who knows? I really don't have a clue who could beat her. I would want to say Felice beats her, but you know, <laughs> I'm a fan. That's just bias. That's just biased right there. So, but. Uh, as far as who really gives her a great fight, I think um, I can tell you who I'd love to see get the title next is Doug Rose. Doug Rose. As far as if Rose can beat uh, Jedrzejczyk or young, sorry, young Jedrzejczyk, <laughs> um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's after a performance like that, it's like fuck. Who can beat? Her? We'll see. With that kind of striking, I mean, you look at her her record and her history. She has more str- more fights than everybody. Period. Yeah. No matter what, no matter what they've been doing, you know, full contact fighting, she's probably the most experienced than all of them, which is scary. I think Michelle Waterson gives her a great fight standing, um, and she's already scary on the ground and very unpredictable. So if that fight ever happened, that'd be great. Jessica Aguilar could give her a great fight. I don't, you know, and, and I don't think that she could beat her standing, but I think that she's more, um, she's a, she's a, she's a more credible MMA grappler and she would make it much harder for, uh, jo- Joanna, you know? It is hard to think who would standing wise give you one. Yeah. Is there anybody? I don't think there is. No. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is Ernesto Houston's. Proust, like one of his great students. Yeah, so, exactly. My yeah. God, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably I'll say this: if Michelle Watterson fought her, I I would I would pick her. Other than that, no. That other than her, I don't I don't I don't know who will be the next person. But that's the thing is, you know, it's very exciting. You know, who, you never know who could upset Jerron next. So at some point, it's gonna happen. We'll see when. Next question. With upsets being ha, someone's listening to me. With upsets being a trend this year, what next big upset do you predict this year? Oh, that's easy for me. Uh, Anthony Johnson versus John Jones. That's the next big upset this year. Anybody that wants to challenge me on that, go ahead and write the comment down, question it, and hell, I'll even have, I'll even let you come on to the podcast so I can talk about it more. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me look at the schedule. Uh, my heart pick is Burrell over Dillashaw. My realistic pick is uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson over John Joe. I love it. You've you've crossed over to the right side of the force. I still want to see Burrell win so badly. I know you don't, but it's not going to happen. Just stop dreaming. Probably not. Probably not. Unless he's an underdog, then he's got the odds on his side. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, man. I I wouldn't be opposed to Burrell won because then that would set up a good trilogy fight. Uh, yeah. Or like you know. Cruz comes in. That'd be good. Yeah, some t- at some point Cruz's got to come back, and yeah, man, who's new? he says he he's he he might come back sometime in the fall, which uh you never know that could make so that that could be when you know that trilogy fight happens if Burrell wins. But uh, yeah. other than that, we I mean we really haven't talked about bantamweight in a while, even though it's a very exciting division. But we'll we'll get into that in the next podcast. We got one last question, and uh, I know you got to get out of here. Yeah. Who is the next person to challenge and win a title next? Well, I just said Johnson. Um, huh. But I'll go with, with besides Johnson since, you know, that's, uh, you know, the same answer I keep giving anyway. <laughs> Let's look. Okay, you got Kane Verdum. At middleweight, you got Wideman Vitor. Welterweight, Robbie Rory. Uh, lightweight, Rafael. And the winner of Khabib Cerrone. Featherweight, Connor Aldo. Bantamweight, uh, TJ Burrell. Featherweight or flyweight, I mean, uh, Johnson, Ki, Horiguchi, and Ronda, probably Betch or Home or you know, probably not Ronda. She's not going to fight for a while. So, 
take that away. I was just looking at it at the fights coming up, other than Johnson. <sighs> Ooh, hmm. I'd say Probably Khabib, right? If Khabib, I would say Khabib, like I, honestly, I know that it's, that fight hasn't happened yet, but I'll say Khabib beats Cerrone and then beats Rafael sometime in the fall. Uh, I'm with that too. I'm, Other than I'm, that, I think uh, TJ defends. I think Johnson defends. I think Johnson win, or I mean Anthony Johnson wins. I think. DJ uh, defends, uh, and I said other than Johnson. So besides him, I think v Weidman defends. Uh, I think Robbie defends. I think Aldo I think defends. Huh? Yeah. I was going to say that I think on paper McDonald's got a pretty good chance, but I'm still picking Lawler. The fact that he came out as the favorite opening odds against Robbie is kind of silly, especially considering Robbie is the champ and Robbie has beaten Rory. <laughs> it's oh, very yeah. odd. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was thinking like, oh, dude, somebody's gonna put the house down on that bet right now. <laughs> they um, should get another house, two for one for t or you know, two to one. <laughs> That's. I think my, my pick would be uh, Khabib and uh, Rumble Johnson and. Uh... That's really all I can think of. I mean, I I can't really predict the next next challenger for these divisions. So I really don't know. I I don't see anyone beating Weidman in the near future. I don't see anyone beating Kane in the near future. I don't see McGregor beating Aldo. I don't see McDonald beating Lawler. So I don't see anyone beating DJ, even though I'd love for Horiguchi to beat DJ because, you know, Japan. Just to mix up that division, too. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say uh, lightweight. I think that title changes hands another time before this year ends. I'd love to see that make the division a hell of a lot more. In, uh, I mean, it's already interesting, but it'd make it really, really fucking interesting with that triangle going on between RDA beat Pettis, and you got uh, Khabib who beat RDA. So yeah. you know. I, I'm just, you know, as far as the excitement factor, it's great to see divisions like this thriving in the sense that there's so much competition going around these days, you know. There are divisions where you got dominant dominant champions like Kane and Jones and and uh, DJ right now and Ronda and so you know but then there are also these divisions that are just wow playing patty cake with that belt and I like it you know and I, and I think that competition in every division is great and uh, but at the same time never think of a division as weak if the champion is dominant depending on the champion if the champion is like eh and he's just barely getting away with wins um, even then. That that it's just it, it's more exciting, and you wouldn't even be talking about it if that was the case. So it's just you know we got to look at the bright side of everything going on here, people. And this this each division looks great, and and I'm excited for it. And man, this 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 fight card is 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 the is is the gateway to a lot of happiness for me. <laughs> so we'll see what happens moving forward. I'm excited. I know you got to get out of here, bro. So I'll close this one out. Uh, fight fans, if you want to get a hold of me, you can hit me up at at, at Nick the Phantom on Twitter. Of course, go ahead on Facebook, MMA Discussion. Go ahead and like our page. I know a lot of you listeners don't have Facebook, so then just ignore me. Um, SportsOfAnarchy.com. Please hit up our, our website for uh, a lot of great articles that uh, we got guys putting up on not just MMA, but you know, football, basketball, baseball. Basketball's not happening right now, so ne never mind. But there's a lot of things going on. A lot of... Uh, um, or um, news that we bring out that we're, we're starting to get on top of. Of course, uh, if you want to listen to us again on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, again, if you want to use uh, an app that allows you to listen to us on the go, in the car, on the radio, Stitcher is the way to go. Get it done. If you want abs and you want to lose your flab like me because I got a pop belly going on, you want to get this flex belt. I'm telling you, if you want to know how it works, go on sportsofanarchy.com. You'll see the review there written by our own Chris Palyuka. If you want to hit up Chris Palyuka, you can hit him up on Twitter, Chris, P-A-G-L-I-U-C-A, uh, on uh, Twitter, at Sports of Anarchy, also the Twitter handle. Uh, again, please hit us up on MMA Discussion. We're starting to get a fair number of people roaming in because of the podcast, which I appreciate. I love you guys. I, I've started to see some messages come in and roll in because of you. Um, for everybody listening, we thank you very much. And of course, uh, just so everybody knows, we're trying. Me and Chris Palyuk have also agreed to try and get this going on a, on uh, every podcast on Monday and Thursday, um, which makes the best sense as far as you know going into a weekend that I might have a fight card or coming off of a card or a weekend where there was a card. So um, 
Mondays and Thursdays. That's when you can put us down on your appointment calendars, all that such, to listen to us. We appreciate you guys. Love you. Chris, say later. All right. Thank you very much again for having me, and good night and good morning, guys. <laughs> later.